nothing but greatness today. We're set to go. Beautiful conditions. It is 57 degrees as we kick this off in a couple of minutes. 135 here in the West. Oh, If you want some in this league, you gotta go take it. Yes, sir. Let's go take that today. Let's go. Yeah. Offense, protect the ball. Yeah. Protect the ball today. Defense, do what we do better. Yeah. 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 Go take that rock. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, dominate on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. me the football <laughs> that's what I want to it's like handing a 12 year old like this this is like, oh, Mufasa. Uh, I want to throw this so bad <laughs> guys the last service I was so tempted the entire service I just wanted to wing it right there at Brandon but I better not um, so tonight's a big game yeah. right so on, uh, so on the count of three I just want to hear you know you're gonna be uh, yelling at a TV screen like an idiot uh, with food and family and you're gonna have a lot of fun tonight uh, but I just want to hear on the count of three who are you gonna be cheering for tonight at the big game one two three Chiefs. all right all right so who so who is the, the one um 49ers fan <laughs> in the room i heard one is that you emily yeah they're I like heard, i'm not i heard raising one my hand. maybe two like go oh, 49ers <laughs> in the back it's like oh poor we person. still love you yeah we still not really um <laughs> somebody came up to me, uh before church before first service and said, um, I don't think you're supposed to be talking about politics or athletics in church. And I said, who made up that stupid rule? <laughs> so if you want to know who I'm voting for in the presidential race, just come and talk to me and I'll tell you exactly who I'm voting for. And I will tell you tonight that I'm running for the Chiefs! Yeah! yeah! My whole boy! My whole... <laughs> um, so anyway, we're going to have a good time tonight. But you know, Super Bowl 54, dang, they made it. Like, both teams made it. Sorry. And that is quite an accomplishment just to make it to the Super Bowl. Sure. And if you think about what it took to get them there, you and I both know that it took a lot of strategy. It took a lot of intentionality. It took a lot of purpose, a lot of discipline, a lot of it. It took a lot of things. And it's not a mistake. It's not an accident that these two teams have made it. They have earned it to get to where they are at. But yeah. I can tell you, you're going to think I'm like prophetic and I just, I'm so close to God, another future, but I can tell you who absolutely will win tonight's game. For sure. Promise. Bet you a million dollars. <laughs> I know, I, I promise you I can tell you who's going to win tonight. Once the score is complete. How will we really know who has won the game? By the scoreboard. They can go into overtime, 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 overtime. They can go into a thousand times. But at the end of the game, how do we know who wins? The By the scoreboard. Points. Whoever has the most points, right? That's right. So sports, the sports world has made it really easy for us to know when we're winning because it's measurable. Right. There's a score. There's a number. There's a metric by which right. we can realize this team made more points than this team. So we know who won. But yeah. in life... It's not that easy, is it? It's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to know. Wouldn't it be nice, though, if we scoreboard every day? You know, like every time I say, honey, yeah. you look really hot today. <laughs> bing, 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 10 points. Right? Right. I, you know, I could, I could go to my kids and say, my, my daughters, you, girls, you are so, you are so pretty. You, my sons, you are so smart. You work so hard. I, you know, and I would just bing, bing, bing. It'd be so nice if we had a scoreboard to tell us, but we don't. So the question we have to ask ourselves in life, whether it's in your marriage or your career right. or your parenting or your relationship with God, we need to know how to keep score. We need to know how to know when we're winning. Right. So how do we do that? Well, in today's passage, we're going to hear from a guy 
that is going to lay out some, some biblical, some scriptural um, guidelines to what it means for you and I as winners, right. okay? And so today is a really good message. Get ready for today's message, The Winner's Edge. Okay, so tell me, in this room, by a show of hands, how many of you guys like to win at anything that you do? You, you like wanna, to win. You like to win? Come on, you like to win. All right, how many of you, by a show of hands, you like to lose? Go ahead, throw them up. Oh, oh you, come on. Some of you just don't like to participate. Okay, I get it. That's fine. Listen, most of us deep down, we want to win. We don't show up, put on a uniform, go out on a field, onto a court, planning to lose, right? This reminds me, as Brad and I were preparing, about when our kids were in pre-K. Now, I love sports. I played sports all through school and into college. I was an avid athlete. I loved it. And if I couldn't be good at it, I wasn't going to do it. Because I was going to win if I was going to play, all right? Yeah. So my kids, I was so amped up when they all turned four. And it was time to enroll in t-ball and soccer and everything that you could possibly play right. at that age. Let me help set the scene. So we have matching uh, lawn chairs. The kids, <laughs> Misty and I, water as bottles got water bottles. On them. The kids have their names on the back of their shirts. Um, okay, you know. hold on. Let me break in. We have four kids. Some of you guys know this, some of you don't. They're all teenagers now, but we had them in two and a half years because we're champs like that, okay? Four kids, no, two and a half years. No, let me clarify okay? why we had kids <laughs> We don't have time years. for that. Knock okay. it off. Okay, so <laughs> ask us later. So when, <laughs> we were, when we showed up, we were half the team because, you know, when you first start out, you can go co-ed. So we have two girls and two boys. So the Heltons were like half of every team we played And on. if we ever couldn't make it, they had to forfeit. If we never missed a game. We never missed a game, though, never so that didn't happen. But okay. it would have happened. All right, so we show up first day for T-ball. I'm stoked, love baseball. Ooh. So we show up, and I'm like, why is the scoreboard not on? Like, it's almost game time. get the power time. of the scoreboard, hey, please? Hey, we don't have, guys, hey. Scoreboard. We don't have a scoreboard. And somebody said, we don't, we don't use the scoreboard. I said. Some mom. Why is it broken? Like, like what, what's the problem? Well, first of all, who are you? Like, who nominated you king of the committee? <laughs> I'm no, like, what? turn the scoreboard on. They said, oh, no, you don't understand. I said, well, where's the scorekeeper? Oh, we don't have a scorekeeper. Oh, we can fix that. Wait, 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 hold on. Why not? We're here. Two teams Matching playing chairs. ball. They said, oh, we don't keep score at this age. We just show up to have fun. I'm like. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, hold on. I got a scorebook in the car. Be right back, okay? So I go to the car. I come back. With Pro my paper I'm and my pen. Staying right now, and it's not making any sense, and it's giving me a headache. Exactly. Go ahead. So, every game that year, every game, I keep score the whole time. When the game's over, right here, baby, we won. She jumps Kate. out of her chair. She's like, we, we won, won everybody. Okay. Yeah. I'm the mom. 15 to 11. I'm videoing every game. We're going to watch game plays afterwards. We're going to go back, have a little footage. Even now, my kids are in high school. I video every single game. <laughs> Why? Because I want my kids to be winners. We're going to have the winner's edge. We're going to discipline ourselves. We're going to do everything that it takes. But in life, listen, you got to first define what the win is in any area if you are going to know whether you're winning or losing. Follow me. If as a parent, my win is just raising them until they move out, that's pretty easy. Some of you guys are like, no, it's not. Some of you, you might say, well, my win is just that my kids obey. Okay? If that's your win, you'll parent towards that. You might be a jerk, but you can probably make your kids obey. My win, personally, as a parent, is that my kids have a real relationship with Christ, and they step into their purpose and their destiny for yeah. which God literally formed them in my womb. So the way that I parent has everything to do with molding and shaping them to have a relationship with Christ and hear his voice. That's a little different than me just beating their rear ends to make them mine. I did that when they were little. Now they're bigger than me, okay? You got to have a plan. You got to know if you're winning. Now listen, in your marriage, if you say, you know what, how do I know if I'm winning? Some of you would say, we're still married. We're winning. And I would say, mm, not enough for me. Just because I didn't get divorced doesn't mean I'm winning. Right. Are you still in love? See, our win here. Our goal in being married is that once we raise all of our kids, that we're still in love and we actually want to be together for the rest of our life. So we 
every day and every week we have a strategy around having that win in our marriage. We have to have a winning edge for our marriage. So what does that mean? Here's an easy example. We're going on a date. We're going to dinner and a movie. And, and the kids are like, ooh. <laughs> they're not. Like, you're not going. Why? We're and we'll, going. we'll tell them because we want to love each other when you're no longer here. When you're not here. And if all I do is pour all of my time and my energy and my money into you four, when you're gone, our life was so wrapped up around you, we probably won't even like each other. So you got to figure out, you got to define what the win is. What is the win in your career? What is the win in your walk with God? This morning, we are going to find out about the winner's edge from one of heaven's hall of famers, mm. one of the all-time greats. This guy is known to you by, as the Apostle Paul. But listen, like every athlete, have you ever noticed that when an athlete starts rising to the top, or anybody for that matter, people start digging up their They're past. Junk. Yep. Right? Oh, yeah, they might be up here, but do you know what they used to do? Listen, Paul is one of the all-time greats, and he had a past. So I'll just dig it up for you before I tell you about who he is. Paul was the guy who, prior to giving his life to Christ, was trying to stop the movement of Christianity. Paul was the guy that was going around killing and executing Christians, all right? He had a very serious past. But when I say that he is one of heaven's hall of famers, here's what he ends up doing. He ends up having an encounter with Jesus. He doesn't just have a little encounter. He has a life-altering encounter with Jesus. He totally turns his life around. He ends up being a church planter that planted more churches than we can even imagine. Mm -hmm. He ends up writing two-thirds of the New Testament mm -hmm. that you read and that you quote, and he was so practical and down to earth. I love it. He love just talked our language yep. because he had a rough past, all right? So he was able to communicate with everyone on every level, Jews and Gentiles. Jesus used him as a revolutionary in that day. Now, Paul in 1 Corinthians But the greatest of all, nine, the greatest accomplishment of all that really in our book made him a winner is that he died for the sake of the gospel. He was a martyr. He, he, died, right. he, he paid a price. I mean, when we look at our favorite athletes and how they've risen to the top, we he look at all the price. sacrifices they've made, their accomplishments, their stats, everything they've done. Like Paul is one of heaven's hall of famers and he will be forever because he gave that ultimate sacrificial gift he gave up his life so that people could make heaven their home, and that's what it's all about. That's right. So go with us this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, if you have your Bible. If not, it's going to be on the screen. I'm going to start in verse 24, and Paul says this. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Paul was not about losing. Paul was just like me. If he showed up, he was keeping score, all right? <laughs> he wanted to know that he was winning in life. And he goes on, if you go back two verses, he defines for us what the win is for him, all right? And I believe this should be the win for us. It says in verse 22, when I am with those who are weak, I share in their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. Verse 23, I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. Listen, here was Paul's win if you didn't see what I'm reading. Paul defined his win as this, I will do anything short of sin to bring people yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. Why? Because he began to realize that after a personal encounter with Christ, everything in his life changed. And he would stop at nothing to help other people experience what he had experienced. That became his personal win in life. So the first thing, if you're going to have a winner's edge, the first thing you're going to have to do, guys, is run to win. And you say, oh, that's, that's pretty easy. Really? Because I think a lot of people just show up in life just show up. It's like, well, I'm here. Don't I get an A for effort? Not really. You got to show up with the intentionality of running, of doing something, of putting in the time, putting in the hard work. That's what Paul was talking about.
off. And you're going to see in the next verse in just a second what it really took to be that winner. So a lot of you guys, our competitiveness might be like giving you a headache right now. I understand kind of where you're coming from. You're like, man, you guys are really competitive. And if, if naturally you're not a very competitive person, I can understand where you're coming from. But, like, when, when you look at everything that Paul lived and what he experienced and what God had called him to, he saw the value of, yeah. of people that were lost, were, were without hope, and he yes. knew that he had something that they needed so bad. And so he gives this illustration. You've got to run to win. You can't just settle for ordinary when God calls us to be extraordinary, right. to do the things that he's called to do. Some of us settle. We settle for, for less. We settle for just surviving when God wants us to thrive. I'm not talking about in ways that benefit ourselves. I'm right. talking about in ways that God can use us. God calls us to win. If you're a coach, you can use us. Kids, this is scriptural. We are called to win, <laughs> right? No. I, mean, I mean, I don't know, years ago, I don't know when they started doing this, but they started giving out those trophies that are like honorable mention, oh, right? And, and that's okay, hey, cause, because we need to build our kids up and help them know you're a winner no matter what. But if you really didn't win, why are we giving them a trophy? Now you exactly. might disagree with me and that's perfectly okay. But like when I see, when I see that because of the competitive drive. Exactly, like I, if I won first place and I'm I, holding on to my trophy. I want to go Grinch mode. Come you guys on. ever seen the Grinch? Like Grinch? Okay, so I want to go Grinch and I want to be, I want to, that little four-year-old kid that did not win, I want to just but stick, I, showed up. I want to stick my lip out and I want to go, second place is for first place losers. <laughs> Give me that trophy. <laughs> I want to rip it out of their hands. I will take it from them until they're crying. And you're like, Pastor Brad, you are an evil person. No, no, it's an illustration, people. It's okay. Calm, calm down. down. Calm down. It's an illustration. <laughs> God wants us to have a drive to be right. everything that he has called us to be. That's right. To Intense. do everything that he's called us to do. That's right. All right, check this out. So Paul has given us this formula, all right, for, for this winner's edge. Misty talked about it. If you're going to compete in, in the race of life, in, in, this, in this game, life, run to win, compete to win. But let's look at something else that Paul pulls out of this, this text. It says in verse 25, all athletes are disciplined. Say discipline. Disciplined. They're disciplined in their training. They do it. What's it? They do it. They train. They discipline themselves right. to win a prize that will fade away. So tonight, the big game, Super Bowl 54, someone is going to win. But I would dare say, some of you maybe. But most of us in the room, 10 years from now, if I were to just call you on the spot and say, who won Super Bowl 54? You probably won't remember. Now, if you're a massive Chiefs fan, and you're, because we haven't won in 50 years, all right? So I'm just saying, you might remember that. But let's try it this way, all right? Let's try it this way. And I want you to be totally and completely honest this morning, all right? 10 years ago, let's do it. 10 years ago, raise your hand if you honestly do not know who won the Super Bowl 10 years ago. I'm raising my hand. 10 years ago. You do not know. That's like 99% of the room, people. Somebody came up to me after church last service, and they said, <clears throat> the Saints, they won. And I was like, well, you probably Googled you it or Googled something. Googled it while we were preaching. But the fact is, we don't remember. What's my point? It's, a, it's an award. It's a ring that we're not going to remember because not guess either. what? It's temporary. It's, it's something that, that, we, that we acknowledge in this world. It's, it's temporary. But guess what? That the prize that we're competing for what we're really fighting for is that eternal prize right. of not yeah. only heaven as our home, but doing everything within our power yeah. to fight, fight, fight on the behalf of others to help right. them make heaven their home yes. as well. That's what this church has always been about from the second we yes. started on our couch with one family. It's always been That's about right. helping those who are hurting and without yes. hope Amen. and sharing the love of Jesus Christ so that they can truly live and experience peace and joy and strength yeah. and comfort and one day yeah. live in heaven for Come eternity on. where there's right. no more crying, no Come more on. pain, no more Come heartache, on. no right. more regrets. That's Amen. why we do what we do. Right. That's why we run to win. That's right. Amen. What is what does Paul say it takes? You not only have to run to win, compete to win, but you have to discipline yourself. What is discipline? I love Pastor Craig Rochelle. Let's look at what Pastor Craig says. He says, discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. Isn't that a good way to say it? Yeah. Choosing what you want most over what you want now. What does that mean in your health? What does it mean in your marriage? What does it mean in your walk with God? It means deciding, okay, 
I'm going to have to condition myself. I'm going to have to train myself. I'm going to have to discipline myself. Say discipline. Discipline. I'm going to have to discipline myself to do in the moment what I don't want to do. The very thing that hurts, the thing that brings me pain, the thing that makes me uncomfortable. I have to condition myself to do the things that I don't want to do, and the result eventually is that I will become the person I want to be. That's That's what Paul is saying. He's yeah. saying, I, 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 I work so hard, and we're training, and we're, we're pushing, we're doing what we don't want to do. Do you think he wanted to die? Do you think he was looking yeah. forward to going to Rome and dying? No! But he did it because it was about what he wanted most. That's right. He wanted to make a statement. I'm willing to die for the cause of Christ. Jesus died for me. Right. And I'm willing to die so that I can share the gospel in Rome. And hopefully that gospel message is going to get out That's around right. the entire world. Imagine what God, listen to me. Come imagine on. what God wants to do in your life. If you would be willing to step out and do what is against the grain. Come on. Something he's asking you to do that you don't want to do. But imagine how he can be glorified through you because of your obedience. Because you're willing yeah. to do what you don't want to do. Imagine. Imagine. Okay. It's like C3. You know, we play this big, fun video that looks cool and exciting. And then we have Brandy, and she did a great job coming out explaining C3. But do you think we're doing that just for a bunch of hype? Do you think we're doing that because, man, we are going to make $2 per person. (laughs) We are going to rake it in. We're going to make so much money for every person that signs. We're not making any money. Why are we pushing so hard for you to go to C3? Because we want you to win. Listen. When Misty and I started this church, we had friends of ours, pastors, and their churches were exploding. People were hearing about Christ. They were growing in their relationship with God. Their churches were on fire. And we're sitting here on our couch. We're like, what the heck? Like, what are we doing wrong? And all these friends of ours are like, man, you got to go to C3. It is just awesome. You're going to come back so on fire for God, and you're going to just... You're just going to be able to get away and just, you ever, you ever swim to the bottom of the swimming pool? My wife hates it. Like, she's like, I feel like I'm going to drown. I love swimming to the bottom of a pool. You want to know why? It's totally and completely silent. It is so relaxing. You're like, you're crazy. No, I hold my breath and I go down to the bottom of the pool and I just sit there and just completely still. Have you ever done that? Raise your hand you ever done that. Maybe I'm just crazy. Wow. I think it's so relaxing. Like, you just... You just complete silence. You just block everything out. That's what C3 does. You go and you get away from all this nine to five. You, get, you step out of whirlwind every day. Right. And you go and you just swim to the bottom of the pool and you're just like, God, here I am. That's right. And he speaks to you. And he fuels you with fire. That's right. And you come back and your coworkers and your family members and your friends are going to watch you burn. Right. That's why we push it. We want you to win. We want you That's to right. come Amen. back fired up, That's ready right. to Amen. do this year. So I'm just going to do this soft plug right here. I don't think it's too soft. I'm right, right <laughs> in your face. As your pastors, this is not hype. I'm telling you right now. I want you to pray about it. About it, okay? Two days. Two days. I'm asking you to pray. God, carve out two days for you so that my other three Come on. be for you. Come on, it's good. Can I take two days, God? Two days. A few hundred bucks. Okay? Two days to swim to the bottom of the pool, to hear from you, Sorry. to come back and listen to what's going to happen. Your marriage is going to get better. Sorry. Listen, bosses, your employees are going to get better. Please share your favorite scripture. It's in the message. I don't know where it comes in, but share it now. Colossians 3.23, and it says this. Whatever you do, do it with all of your heart for God and not for man. Anything that you do. You know what's amazing? Brad and I think about this all the time. You know, if you're an avid sports parent like we are, my kids went to every sports camp. We paid for them out of our own pockets to go to camp. Our kids do off-season. We pay for that stuff out of our own pockets. Why? Because that gives them a little bit more of an edge. Come time in the summer for your kids to go to camp, this church pays for any kid who can't afford to go. And we say, we'll pay 
for your kid to go because why? Because it gives them the winner's edge. They get away. They shut off their phones. Guys, that's why we go. C3 is a Super Bowl. It is the opportunity for you to isolate yourself and hear from God and listen to me. You say, I can do that here. You sure can, but when was the last time you, you shut your phone off for two days and you got on your face and you prayed and you listened to worship and preaching round the clock for two days? Tell me when. That sounds exhausting. It is, but you'll come back so fueled up. You'll be so fired up that everybody around you will watch you burn. You're like, where have you been, C3? That's right. Serious. And so so when you come back, yeah, you, you've got Come on. It's all right. So the reason I had her you quote that scripture, the reason I had her quote that scripture is because it affects your everything. When you, right. when you, It's not C3. It's getting on the road for six hours. That's right. Rubbing some shoulders. And then it's rubbing shoulders with your church family. And then it's hearing from God and taking notes yeah. and God speaking to you. God speaks to us every, every time we time. go. And we come back with a mission. And he's like, I want you to do this, this, and that. And not just for our yeah. ministry, for our whole life. For That's why family. I quoted that scripture, is in everything you do, do it as unto God. When you carve out time right. to be with God, it's going to affect everything in your life. Right. So I want to challenge you, pray about it. And it's easy to register. You can for you as soon as church is over, 20 bucks to get you registered and get you secure, right. okay? As we move into our third point, I'll tell you this. A few years ago, Brad and I, we always hired a babysitter found a place for four kids to go that was a mistake and three years ago god began to convict our hearts why in the world are you not forking out the money to take your kids and we were like holy cow that's like vacation you take all six of us that way well and when c3 started it was 300 dollars per ticket that's right and now it's 20 bucks and because we book a year in advance it's cheaper but we made a decision set our kids down and said look we used to make this about mom and dad but this is also about you. We want you to experience what we're experiencing and come back fired up in the middle of the springtime to come back to school. Our four kids now go with us every year and they get so this. Every year they bring a friend. And we book hotel rooms for all of them. And we pay out of our own pocket for all of those kids that's and their friends. Penny. And we pay for all of it because we got a bunch of money. No, not no, at all. That's not true. Because we sacrifice hardcore because it impacted their life so much that we realized, you know what? This is the most important thing we can do. We pay for sports. We pay for everything we want to do. Why not pay Their spiritual on purpose development. to develop them spiritually? And point number three is just this. It's about being intentional and on purpose. Look at verse 28. It says this. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing or I'm not just training. I'm not just going to the gym. I am running with purpose. What is purpose? Purpose is the reason behind what you do, all right? It is the why. A lot of times we get caught up in the what we should do. But before you can do what, you need to know why so you good. do it. Why do you get up and come to church on That's Sunday morning? That's what pushes morning, you. Right? Why do I read my Bible every single day, every day, before I do anything else? Why? Because I have realized that if I don't have spiritual food, I'm not going to be able to function. I realize that at the end of the day, if I want to be bold, if I want to win people for Jesus, I've got to be spiritually strong. I go to the gym and I run on the treadmill way too long, and I hate it with every stroke. I hate it. I hate running. It's because you have short legs. I hate running because I have short legs. It takes me forever. I hate it. Just Why do I do it? One mile. Because I want to be healthy. Because I love it? No. Everything we do, we don't do because we love it. I love cheesecake. I'd eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I can't. I feel the presence of God. We have to run with purpose. Every step, I love that passage. Every step. Every step. Intention. Every word I say. Am I thinking about the words I'm saying so I can draw somebody closer to Christ? Am I thinking about what I'm doing so I can impact someone's life? Am I being intentional about the words I'm speaking over my children and speaking life into them? Am I being intentional about the way that I am with coworkers because I want to inspire them and I want to drive them to know Christ? Why? Because that's my win. That's what Paul was saying. I run to win. win. How do you do it? Come on, Amen. give God a hand. Amen. You run to win by disciplining yourself and by running with purpose in every step. Let's pray. God, I just lift up every person in this room. I just... Who, who you really want us to be. I pray, God, that we would begin to run in our lives to win. I pray that we would not settle for less than our very best. 
you deserve our best because our marriage glorifies you. Our, our, the way we manage our finances glorifies you. The way we honor and serve our employers at work, that honors you. I pray, God, that, we, that you would show us in our hearts, Lord, how we can compete to win, how we can discipline ourselves to do what we need to do to have that winning edge. And God, to just have a, a drive to move with purpose. Keep our why in front of us why we got married in the first place. God, why, why you have given us these children that you've given us. Why you've put us in this church, in this community. Show us the why so that it helps us to have the discipline, the focus, the strength we need to do the what each and every day. God, I pray right now that you would help all of us to have that winning edge that like Paul, we would honor you in everything that we do because we don't do it for men. We do it for you. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I'd be in this room today, and you know, you're the very person that we're talking about when it comes to dealing out hope, helping people to hear who Jesus is. Maybe you don't have a real relationship with him this morning. I want to tell you right now, God loves you so much, and we love you, and this can be your day. This can be the day that you make the best decision of your entire life by responding to the knocking on your heart's door, where Jesus is knocking and knocking and knocking right now, and he's saying, will you please let me in. He's not calling you to perfection, to be perfect, because you will never be as perfect as him, but he is asking you to a place of perfect effort to give him your very best. You can do that. And today, it's a matter of just saying, God, forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I confess him as Lord of my life. And so I just want to know in this room, nobody's looking around, and we're going to just say this prayer with you, but know right now if there's anybody in this room you feel that knocking on your heart's door like I was talking about this is your moment respond to Jesus let him in with heads bowed and eyes closed would you if you say that's me would you just raise your hand right now I want to know who I'm about to pray with we're going to pray as a church come on don't be shy I see your hand anybody else today I see your hand anybody else anybody else today come on come on. you feel that tugging on your heart be saying I want you to know me come on make that decision. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Well, church, let's pray this prayer together, as I said. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. I confess him as Lord of my life. I confess him as Lord of my life. Help me to have that winner's edge. Help me to have the winner's edge. Help me to run to win. Help me to run to win. Help me to be disciplined. Help me to be disciplined. Help me to run with purpose. Help me to run with purpose. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you Amen. just made that decision, that is the best decision you will ever make in your life. Will you put your hands together for all of those who are <laughs> today who said yes to Jesus? Woo! Lisa and I discovered early on that we made a decision that we're not going to play games in our marriage. We're not going to play games at all. And I'm not talking about playing games like messing with each other about our marriage. I'm talking about playing games like Monopoly and Sorry and games like that. Because we realize that if we're going to play games like that, then we're going to end in divorce real fast because we're both very competitive and we're not about to be like the sweet one and let the other person win just because we want to let them win. I did that once and it didn't do good when she found out that I let her win. And, it, and, the, and in the same way in our life, we want to win. In everything we do, we want to win. And winning requires something to do that. A, a win might be that you want to become debt-free one day or your win may be I want a job that's going to supply me with a with an annual income of $100,000 a year, or your win may be to retire a millionaire in life. Those are ways that we can win in, in, in our personal lives. But I'll tell you right now, the first step in order for you to win is what Pastor Brad just did, and that's to give your life to Christ. And if you haven't done that, find somebody at this church and pull them inside and say, hey, I missed my moment when Pastor Brad gave the invitation but you didn't miss the moment in life, okay? So grab somebody, let them pray with you. Let you, you guys, the first step is accepting Christ into your heart, and that's the first way for you to win. The second thing to do is to give everything to God. Not just give it to God whenever you're sick or when you're having a hard time with that coworker or when your spouse is really, really annoying you. We don't just give it to God then. We got to give God everything and include it in everything in that as our finances. And God's real simple. It makes it real clear. We give a 10% of our increase, the first 10% of what God gives us. And so we want it. That's, if you're not a believer, you think I'm crazy. That's fine. But if you are a Christ follower and you want to do what Christ has asked you to do, then this is the next step in your life.
okay? So that's a 10%, and we make it real simple. We do it three ways you can give. You can give cash or check as the buckets are passed. You can go to a website, mountainmoverschurch.org, and click on Donate Now, or you can text MMC to 77977. You can give that way. And we want you to have the most of what God has in store for you. So grab your check-in cards. We're going to pray real quick, and we're going to ask God to bless this offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for this opportunity that we can give to you, Lord, so that way you can take it and do what you need to do, Lord, so we can continue reaching people from the north, the east, the south, and the west, Lord, as we come in and we teach them about you and create more followers here. In your name I pray, amen.